Hey guys, it's Queen DJ, and in today's video, I will be reacting to Rain 2 episodes 5 and 6 of Simpho Gear. Let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go. Oh. She gotta save the world, so she gotta train first. So she can be up as fuck. <laughs> Is this jump <dumb> out? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh fuck. Ooh. No, why did you do that? <laughs> I missed that stupid joke. <laughs> Even though a lot of people did not like it, I loved the hell out of it. I thought it was interesting. Fuck, it's hot. <laughs> but see, okay, she has no reason to be mad at Hibiki today because she's training. She said she was skipping school. Now, if she didn't write that note and sent that to her and left it in it. You know she would have been pissed. But like, well, goddamn, you like, <laughs> you stood me up on our date. And now, you know, I'm not waking up to you in the morning. Nice English. Literally giving me Mari feels from Love Live. Holy fuck. What the hell? Please tell me that's not pink. Oh, okay. All I want to know right now is, and I realized it when she was on the phone, why is she naked? Why is Chris naked? What the hell is going on? Is this some BDSM? I don't know about some shit. <laughs> this whole crazy. You gonna let her actually eat with her own hands or are you gonna force her? What type of 50 shades of gray is this? What is this? 
What is this? <laughs> But then wouldn't that be a really good time to steal it since, you know, since no other country can reproduce it? Someone could just come in, swoop in in the dead of night and just take it. Is she at the Prime Minister office? <laughs> Jesus Christ woman I mean her driving ain't bad but it's good but <laughs> she going to speed limit like damn No, I mean you got another purpose to buy for you. You gonna be fine. You're fine. Oh. Because the fact is, Kanani is not it anymore. Yeah, I get that. That fucking hurt.
fine. Don't worry about it. Well, shit. Oh, damn. Mm. Well, shit. <laughs> I mean, did the lady who, you know, was sitting there, like, torturing Chris, did she send them, possibly? I mean, would she have her? Well, of course, she has to have a fucking reason, right? But, you know, we ain't gonna know until like, later on, right? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Now, are we sure? Oh, hey, Cody. Are we sure that nothing's going to really happen with this thing? Because, see, since now all y'all know, and I feel like somebody in this damn group is a traitor, I'm just saying. You know what? You've dished her so many times. <laughs> that is not even funny. Maybe a meetup or something? Free tickets to your next concert or something? Mm. What do you give to some to a whole bunch of fans that want to be like go to a concert for a singer?
Yep. Go home and deal with your girlfriend. So we seriously not going to talk about the fact that she had the freaking suitcase that had blood on it or something with blood on it. We not going to talk about that. We serious? <laughs> like, we just going to ignore that? Okay. Because she looked like a fucking traitor to me. Like, or is there a reason why? Yeah, there's a reason. There's always a reason. Well, we didn't know their names, so they dead. I, I mean, yeah, girl. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Torrent, get off. Thank you. Fucking <laughs> Torrent. Torrent was like, oh shit, I need an update. No. Mm. Well, at least those two are okay. Unlike the other two cars. Mm. Hi, Chris. We're not even going to talk about real quick? Okay. 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 <laughs> I still think she's a traitor, I'm just saying. Even though I like her. <laughs> you would think Chris would come down and like at least try to <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's just up there. She's like, no, I'm just gonna watch. Be a bad bitch and watch. See? <laughs> That's okay. Just, you know, kick Chris's ass. What we gotta do? Oh. Mm -hmm. Is this a 
allows to do that. Okay, hold up. She got Excalibur now? She's literally gonna kill everybody! Still, this rage that she has, it, it makes me still think that that's Kanade's rage. I don't know. I got no <laughs> But damn. It's just like, if she can't control it, and it's possibly going to overtake her. I said I don't trust Roko because that smile. Got a lot of questions about her. There's got to be a reason why she's putting her hair back up. You know, she looks pretty with her hair down, but... See, I feel like that she, she flip-flopping. Something. I love her, but then it's like... Mm. And she ain't going to talk about her powers, but she used nothing you just gonna end the episode like that and expecting me like mm, not to ask so many freaking questions about her and then the blood on that like no 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 something about that is not right and i don't know like roco i i do love you you are a very funny interesting character a weird character at times probably a male version of agaraki kun but girl what is your deal like mm-mm you hiding something. She is hiding something, and we need to know. I need to get to the bottom of this. I don't want to wait until, like, episode 13 to find out what it is. I mean, I want to know by episode 6. I got the right to know. That's all. <laughs> but, okay. Chris, you and the, the naked woman, and you put to shade the gray, and Chris... <laughs> what... Deepa, I, you know, I, I don't even want to go on that, but what the fuck? I wasn't expecting that in this episode. I was thinking, like, okay, I, I, I didn't expect it to be a wholesome, sweet episode. I knew there was going to be, like, a lot of moments where we was just going to, like, do a really twist. And ish. I think, you know, yeah, killing the prime minister and then everybody in that group. Yeah, that was a little fucked up. But, I mean, hey, you know, anime characters got to die sometimes, you know? But, um, having, you know, Tsubasa... And Kanade, like, talking to each other, even though Kanade dead. You're giving me the feels, like, honestly, like, let, let's, <laughs> let's go back to what I said in episode one, where the point where she died, and I didn't really have any feels towards it, because, you know, I just met her in the span of ten minutes, and I can't, like, well, it's simply be like, oh my god, like, I'm not emotionally invested to you yet, but it's only, but surely I am. And the more we're, like, seeing both, you know, a phantom Kanade and just Tsubasa, like, literally talking and having them, like, still being able to communicate, even though it's through a dream. And it's not, you know, I mean, it, relatively, it is real. And I'm guessing there's going to be a reason of why Kanade is supposedly talking to her through her dreams and stuff. And it could be, I'm not going to say that, like, yeah, she alive somewhere or some ish. It's just that, um... It's gonna be. It's like it's signifying something. There's a message to this, and we're probably not gonna know until the second half of this season. Maybe I don't know, but it could be she's trying to give her a message, like a warning about something. Maybe to the fact is that yes, her spirit is still somewhat inside of Hibiki, which we did it did discuss that last week in a way, um, and maybe for her to trust Hibiki. I don't know, but I mean. Hibiki is, you know, with the things that are going on with her and having this rage and 
literally being angry and then going dark and then she in a way she does remember certain things because honestly I was thinking about like if she goes that way and she comes back and she's normal and she's not a magical girl essentially she's still she's still a magical girl but she's like woken up after she's done what she did I automatically assumed that she wasn't gonna have any memories about what the hell she did and it, it's interesting that she does have the memories of kind of what she's done and how she destroyed the place and everything and essentially so I'm hoping that maybe if it happens again Tsubasa is there the next time in order to kind of stop her because I feel like there's going to be a point where that darkness or rage is really going to overtake her and it's going to become <clears throat> the more um dominant inside of her rather than her normal self like it, okay I, i'm trying to think of what uh, what the hell i can compare this to you know like how in bleach when ichigo had like his hollow side and stuff and he was always trying to like <laughs> not deal with that it's somewhat like that and if there's another show i could compare it to that i can't really think about right now there's like a few other animes that i can't compare that something to that but I can't remember them. And they had like the exact same situations. Well, no, 100, because 100 did that. And then, um, I don't remember the other show. It's going to come to me, but it's going to come to me later on while pff, I'm probably watching Horizon of <laughs> Nowhere. But yeah, I mean, the episode was good. I still, you know, I'm going to look at Roko a little sideways until, you know, we figure out what all that was. Because, um, I need explanation, please. Uh, the lady who was, you know, over there torturing the shit out of Chris. I want explanation on her. She is clearly the villain because, I mean, look at her. Oh, you know, kind of let's ask this question. You know, typically sometimes villains are just like, fuck it, I just want to be naked. And that that's her. She's just like, I, you know, it's my house. It's my big ass castle. And fuck it, I'm just going to be naked in my own house. I mean, you know, I ain't mad at her, though. But still... <laughs> I mean, I wasn't expecting that, and then, like, Chris being all, like, hung up and tortured, like, oh my god, and then there's blood all over the place, and then she's like, what? I wasn't expecting any of that in this episode, I really thought that, you know, it would have been a wholesome episode, but I also want to go on one more thing, okay, Miku, the relationship between Hibiki and Miku, I mean, right now, it's not really, um, well, there is a lot of tension between the two, because of the fact is, Hibiki is always gone, Miku's like, you know, she's kind of a little mad, more worried, and such, and you know, I mean, yeah, because she ditched her, and she wanted to watch the freaking... <laughs> you know, go on a little date with her and such, I mean, there's gonna be a point where... It, it may happen in episode 6, so maybe from episode 6 to episode 13, because with I'm still essentially thinking about what happened in that very first episode, where she goes to Hibiki's Hibiki grave, and essentially Hibiki is dead, but I, I don't think Hibiki is dead. I feel like, you know, they had to do a fake death for her and such, but, you know, maybe she is dead. Maybe, you know, the rest of the series is just Hibiki's consciousness. And she's dreaming, you know, Simple Gear G to the newest series, and then that's it. I don't know. But, I, I mean, it, it's gonna be a turn for the worst with their relationship. Right now, it's just at the point where, um, yeah, she's a little upset, but she's okay with it. But there's gonna be a point in time, and it could be, like I said, from episode 6 to 13, where... Miku is gonna get hella angry with Hibiki, and she's just gonna be like, I hate you. You're keeping so many secrets away from me, and, you know, we're supposed to be friends, me looking at them as lovers, <laughs> but, um, you know, we're supposed to be, I'm supposed to be your best friend, and you're still hiding things from me. You can't tell me certain things that you can tell Subasa. but the thing is, like, hey, uh, Miku doesn't really know anything about Subasa about the fact is that she's just a singer. She doesn't know anything else, and she doesn't know that Subasa and Hibiki are quote-unquote friends. <laughs> and such so I don't know I mean I don't want their relationship to be bad by the end of this and I hope if it does go bad which essentially I'm assuming it is um we have four other seasons where she can like I don't know no because oh I can't even say that because then if she's gonna assume that she's gonna be fucking dead so I can't even say that but fuck it I'm gonna say it anyway she has four other seasons where she could go back to Miku because I feel like, essentially, there's going to be something. 
and she's gonna try to make it try to have like a better relationship with Miku but because of the fact is that fake death thing is going to come up possibly and she's going to her grave she's never gonna be able to see Miku again and fuck I don't know. I mean, this just hurts. Because, like, I want them to be together. They are so freaking cute together. But because of the fact is that, yes, she is a superhero, magical girl. She has to fight to save the world. And, you know, she can't tell her best friend, love interest, that she's this. And, you know, eventually, yes, because she doesn't want Miku or anyone else who's important to her to die. I get that. But then at the same time. I want her to tell her so that she can have, be like, hey, I gotta go because of this. So then it's not like Miku is sitting here wondering, like, up teen hours in the middle of the night, wondering why the heck she's gone. And then, you know, with the training and then saying, oh, hey, I gotta go do this. Or, hey, I gotta go do that. Things like that. I just want her to know. I mean, but I know it can't happen. I'm just, <laughs> I just want them to be happy. They deserve to be happy. I mean, come on. It's just so fucked up. But, yeah. Go ahead and pause the video. <laughs> and I will see you guys in one second for episode six. <laughs> okay. Episode six in three, two, one, go. Oh, God. She's going to torture her again. Yay. Yeah, because she OP. She main character. I mean, no, essentially, I think all of you are main characters in your own way. But, um, Hibiki <laughs> is that number one main character because we are following her through that POV no matter what. Um, so, yeah, you know, she's gotta have that, you know, OP power. It's because she's Tanya. This is just really her getting revenge on God. Also, I need to watch that Tanya Evil movie probably this weekend or whenever I am not too busy because I really want to watch it and I just got to figure out where the hell I can cut it out into parts. So I don't know. I would watch it tomorrow or Thursday, but no, I could watch it Thursday because I'm going to watch Monogatari on Thursday and Friday, but yeah. I don't know. I just want to watch the damn movie because so many people have told me the movie is good and I'm like, okay, gotta watch it. I might rewatch the series though. Well, alright, so we know since she is best girl, she has the worst backstory. The saddest backstory. Is that the reason why she's best girl? But uh, no, I'm guessing not. There, there's probably other things and other reasons why she is best girl, but I'm guessing we're not going to get those answered till maybe the second season. Thank God you put clothes on this time. Oh my God. walking around.
Girl, I don't even think you're going to be able to find out whatever it is until, like, the final season. Yeah, that too. No, no, no. You ain't no weakling. He, he, you strong. A little overpowered at times, you know, but you, you're getting there. You, you just like, mm, you're not a noob, but you're not a beginner. You're up there. Yeah. No. See, that's just a relationship in a nutshell. They're leaving each other, and I don't like that. <laughs> I would like some pancakes too, but I have donuts. And I've been eating pancakes for, like, two days straight. <laughs> Except yesterday, I didn't eat pancakes. Possibility. Let's see if you remember the European. One of the two. He might die, man. I actually like him, and I don't want him to die. Oh, my. 
my god. He's hurting my feelings. Oh my god. <laughs> Why are you giving me this sadness? Last night during Monogod today, my way is gone. She's not coming back. Today, these two are sad. What the heck is going to happen in Horizon? Are you going to make it <laughs> like that? It's like, I don't like it. It hurts. <laughs> I don't think she's in there. Be honest with yourself. Hmm. That's right. Tell her how you feel. Tell her that you just saw her. It's your boss. I need these two to honestly really fight. I mean, the, the sexual tension is just like right there. Because when she get home, This laugh is so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Basically, you just need to say bye bye, Miku. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. You know, give it a couple episodes. You're gonna kick Chris ass. We all know that. Holy shit. You're overthinking it, but you just, when he became a talk, you need to talk to him. Okay, how much you want to bet that by the time she gets there, either Miku will be still there, or she'll be gone. And it's going to be awkward. Very, very awkward. Uh, never mind. But is it Miku around that area? Oh, yeah, see, Chris, that's why you shouldn't have done any. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. I didn't want this to happen. You just went say the moon on me. This wasn't supposed to happen.
but see Chris rather fight than talk. So what, you just going straight up to a killer? I feel a cliffhanger coming. We got three minutes left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cliffhanger's coming. I, I can feel it. Something. Yeah, mm -hmm, that's gone, but bye. How the hell is she going to get home? <laughs> They're so wrong. Okay. Was not expecting Miku to fucking find out about her. I, You know what? This is what I assumed was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen in episode 6. I thought it was going to happen maybe like 7, 8, or 9. That there was going to be a point, yes, Miku was danger, and she had no other choice to do it. And she had to transform in front of her. And then Miku's like, oh my god, like, why? No, it all makes sense. These are the reasons of why she's ditching me. Because she's saving the world. But I, I don't know, Miku, Miku may not understand. I don't know. I'm scared. Now that she knows, like, is she gonna, like, oh, God. One of two things could happen. They kill her, which, of course, then it gonna happen. Or they erase her memories. Or they don't do anything. They just be like, all right, she knows, she knows. It's okay. She's bound to find out anyway. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. I'm scared for her now because now that she knows her secret is such like everything's gonna change and it's gonna change for the bad. <sighs> what has happened? Like honestly, why? Why? I, I don't like this. Like, no, this is so fucked up. Like, no, this should not have not I can't speak. <laughs> That's how upset I am. This should not have happened. She should have just went home. They should not have walked around on the same path. Oh my god. It just... <laughs> but he, he kicked Chris ass. Like, yay! yay, yay. It was, you know, applaud for that. But still, Miku. My god. Like, I, I don't know what they're gonna do to her. Like, they could do anything to her. Er erase her memories. Do nothing. Something. I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> I am scared. I don't want her. I don't want it to be like any show that I've watched in the past where, you know, best friend, love and trust, whatever, finds out the secret of the main character and then something essentially happens where they have to take um, away their memories or something um, or kill her. Or him. 
because of the fact is that they now officially know too much or they like literally put the character in like a secret underground base for like the rest of their lives and they can never see the light of day ever again which is kind of fucked up but I, I don't think we'll do that to her but still I am I'm like fucking terrified now because they could literally do anything to Miku but then at the same time they could really do nothing but I assumed or I am assuming that in episode 7 <laughs> Or eight. They're going to talk about this. And it, you know what? It is not going to be pretty. I, I feel like this is going to be the point where, yes, Miku is going to lash out at her. Because you can that tension between these two. And it, it's building up more and more. And this just built it up even more. And the fact that she now knows the secret. And when they get home, like, oh my god. Miku is just going to tear her up. And just be like, okay. We need to just sit down, we need to discuss everything that just literally happened, literally everything from episode one up to episode six. Why have you been hiding this from me? You know, best friend, and you're hiding shit from me, and, you know, you're supposed to trust me. <laughs> I don't want this. I don't want this. No. <laughs> At least I didn't cry. Because I was close to crying. Like, in both of these episodes. But, thank God. I mean, Jesus. But this is sad. And this fucking hurts. And, like, oh my God. You you just had to do it to the, do this to me this week. I mean, yeah. My you were yesterday. And then these two today. And, and, you know, I'm about to watch Horizon in a couple of minutes. And I'm scared to find out what the hell is going to happen to Horizon. I don't feel like nobody's going to die in that show anyway. But... I, I just hate this now. I do love the fact that Subasa and Hibiki, like, their relationship is getting a little bit better. Because, let's go back to episode one, and two, and three, and four, where, you know, Subasa was like, mm, you know, let's just go ahead and kick this girl's ass. And to the point now that, yes, they are talking. And she's, I don't really think that they, well, Subasa considers her as a friend yet, or a partner. It's still more of an acquaintance thing. So I'm guessing... The more that she has dreams about Kanade and such, I think the more she'll eventually get over um, Kibiki wanting to, you know, comparing her to Kanade. Something, something's gonna happen. Their relationship's gonna get better and they're going to be able to trust each other. Now that Chris essentially just got her ass whooped and she gotta go back to, um, back home to, um, her, her, um, uh, her dominant. <laughs> I can't imagine how that's going to be. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I hope Chris becomes good soon, kind of, because, you know, I mean, I, as much as I love her being evil, I essentially now want to see what good she can do. And I feel like the only one who could turn her around was Hibiki. I mean, even though, like, girl, that, <laughs> that fight, that talk, <laughs> was interesting, but I, I I don't know. We ain't gonna know until Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever I whenever I have time to watch this. Maybe even next Tuesday. I don't know because Jet Girls comes back on, but uh, we'll see. Other than that, guys, that is my reaction to Detroit's episodes five and six of Simbo Gear. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Matchless Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys. Okay, so I'm going to actually change something about this. So, um, Patreons will now be getting this show and the other show officially on Fridays instead of Saturdays. And still, but everybody else will still get it on Tuesday. No, Thursday. So, I will be seeing everybody Patreons on Friday <laughs> and everybody else on Thursday for episodes 7 and 8. So, yeah. I will see you guys all next time. Bye.